This question is about electricity, and it's about magnetism and uh, basically using the hand rules. Let's see what that means. So we're told that we have a particle, and we don't know what kind of particle it is. Okay, so we don't know what it is here. So a particle, we don't know what it is. But we do know that it deflects this way, so it sort of curves upwards. And that's when it's in a magnetic field. And remember, that's how we often draw things that are into the page. We draw X's. If they're out of the page, we draw dots. That's because we're trying to draw in three dimensions on a 2D thing here. But we're told that the magnetic field goes into the page. So the question is, you know, what could it be? Could it be an alpha? Could it be a beta? Could it be a photon? Could it be a neutron? I just put photon here, and that's what a photon is. Well, let's think about uh, some of these choices here. We can knock out a few. It can't be a neutron. Do you know why? Neutron has no charge. And if something has no charge, it would be undeflected. In other words, it would just go you know, straight through. So it can't be that. Same with a photon. A photon also has no charge, so it won't be deflected as well. So it can't be that. So see, already we can knock off those two. A photon would go right through as well. It wouldn't care about a magnetic field. So then it's either a beta or an alpha. Now you got to think about a beta. A beta is negative charge. At least a regular beta particle is because it's an electron. Remember, that's what it is. It's an electron. And an alpha particle, that's a positive charge. And don't forget what an alpha is. Eh? An alpha, that's a helium-4 atom. Oops, that's supposed to be a 4. Uh, whereas a beta, like a regular beta minus at least, that is just an electron with a charge of minus 1 here. So we normally write it with a minus 1 and a 0 like this. So this is a beta. This is an alpha. So an alpha has a positive charge. A beta has a negative charge. So there we go. So the, basically the difference is, is it positive or is it negative? Which one is it? Well, it helps to use some of the hand rules. Now, um, in my own uh, videos, on my own uh, learning here, what I like to do is I like to split these up. We have a left hand rule and a right hand rule. Now, instead of using sort of the one where you use your finger and your index finger and your middle finger at weird you know, angles, looks like some weird sort of physics gangster sign, um, I like to do it with um, Star Wars. Now, I'm a lousy artist, so you'll have to bear with me here, but I'm trying to draw my hand here. I don't know what happened to that finger there, but there we go. that's supposed to be a thumb. Or your left hand, right? Similar way. I'm clearly not an artist. You can tell I've never been to art school. There we go. The reason I like this way is because this way right here, these are the magnetic field lines. So that would be these, here are these fingers here. Fingers are the magnetic field lines. Your palm, the reason why I like this one is because your palm, which in this case your palm would face sort of into the page here. I'll draw an X for into the page here. I'll say palm equals force. Same with here, right? So the palm is the force. And your thumb is going to be, and now here it depends on the different situations, right? So use the left hand rule if you have negative particles. Use the right hand rule if you have positive particles or current, at least in the IB because they're using that form of current. So the lame way I remember is left hand rules for electrons. So for example, uh, that would be for beta. So if this way right here makes this thing right here work, it would be a beta. If this one here works, it's a positive, so it's an alpha. So that's going to be the trick here. Now, what is your thumb then? Because see, these things have to be orthogonal. They have to be three-dimensional. So see, your, your magnetic field lines go straight up. That's your fingers. Your palm is the direction of the force. And your thumb, that's the last one we have to do here. I need a color I haven't used. So your thumb, thumb equals the velocity. Or it could be the current. In this case, so thumb is the velocity or the direction of its traveling. So look at this then. Try maybe with your right hand rule just to see if that one works. You just have to take a guess. But I mean, very often it's right hand rule, so it's a good guess to make. So let's take your right hand here. I can't really show you, but take your right hand and put your fingers, so point your fingers into the page. So right now my fingers are pointing into this page right now. Now rotate your hand to where your thumb is pointing to the right because that's the initial velocity. You notice that? So if you do that, you'll have, you know, your thumb will be pointing to the right. You'll have your fingers pointing into the page. And in order to do that, do you notice which way your palm is facing? My palm is facing up. That means it will have a force going upwards, so it will curve upwards. And it does. So that's why it's this one. It's an alpha.
Okay, so that's why that's the answer. The answer is, uh, what is that? That's A. It's an alpha particle. Right? That is the answer. Now, you could say, well, what about if it was a beta? Try this one with your left hand. Put your left hand, okay, and try to put your fingers into the page. Have your thumb to the right. But if you do that, your palm will be pointing down. In other words, had it been a beta particle, it would have curved downwards. It would have curved that way. And it clearly doesn't. So that's why it's an alpha, because it's a positive particle. Yes!